Hello, everyone. Um, hope you had a good morning. Um, yeah, we'll get started. So I'm going to talk about multi-tenancy in Apache Hbase. Um, probably some of you know what Hbase is. It's a key value store. And uh, Hbase doesn't give a lot of constructs to um, have a truly multi-tenant data store. And we solve some of those problems in our use cases. So that is something that I'm going to talk about. So uh, myself, Malik Arjun, um, I, I work uh, at Flipkart, which is a leading e-commerce company in India. Um, so that um, e-commerce, when you talk about, you have a wide range of domains and huge sorts of applications with diverse set of needs. And that means that you're going to use a lot of different kinds of data stores, whether it's key values or relational stores based on what what sort of use case, what, what are your needs, and so on, right? So um, largely, Hbase team that we work at Flipkart um, aims towards OLTP-based workloads. And uh, we have uh, almost truly multi-tenant setup. And uh, we have deployed our workloads completely on k And we have a written operator for that. And that link is available if someone is interested. And in terms of deployment, uh, we have huge deployment, around 200 tenants. Um, and uh, uh, we have peak tested for 6 million QPS with the latencies around 50, less than 50, around 50 uh, milliseconds. So that's what uh, some background on uh, what our workload like. Um, Apache Hbase is probably uh, a lot of developers have used. I'll just give a very brief uh, background uh, what is required for this talk, right? Um, if you see, uh, this is these are all the components that are uh, required for uh, running a production grade uh, Hbase cluster. Uh, there are a, general a quorum of general nodes and then a quorum zookeeper, um, a couple of name nodes, a couple of hmasters, and a few data node region servers. Data node and region server are typically co-located uh, to, it gives certain performance benefits and so on and so forth. So if you want to run a production grade cluster, you need probably at least 13 pods. Uh, if uh, say three general nodes, three zookeepers, two name nodes and so on, if you go, you need at least 13 pods. So I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll tell why I'm talking about it a little later. And in terms of uh, data, data sets, uh, a typical HBase setup would have a few regions. Uh, its uh, table is divided into regions. And each region has um, uh, a couple of or one or more column families. And each column families has uh, files, H files in their persistence. Region server hosts region, data node hosts the actual data. Region is an uh, in-memory construct, which is on region server. And H files are the physical uh, data constructs on this. So uh, tenancy in a data store typically means that uh, you are going to have, uh, say, you have two use cases. Uh, both of them are. Um, should have some amount of isolation for you to guarantee certain um, uh, workload requirements. Maybe it is latency, maybe it is throughput, maybe it is uh, whatnot, right? So you need to have certain amount of isolation between tenants to guarantee those um, requirements. So if you look at uh, this particular diagram a little close, uh, you can see, so you can see there are two tables. Table one, there there is uh, in co different color codes. Region, data, and wall. Region is in-memory construct. Data is what is stored uh, on disk. And wall is conceptually similar to a bin log, if you're aware of maybe MySQL. But it does a bit more in HBase. Um, so that is wall. So you have two tables in different color codes. Ideally, what you want on the right side, if you see, say you have two tenants and four nodes in each tenant. All the green is on tenant A, all the red is on tenant B. But what is available with Hbase is, uh, if you see, green parts are isolated. 
right? In the first layer, that is the region. And if you see data and wall, they're not really isolated. That is uh, what when we started, uh, when we wanted to use HBase as an option, uh, we thought of solving these two problems uh, to uh, get to a truly multi-tenant to make use of, say, a complex store like HBase, which has, uh, which is, which which does pretty good on certain aspects. But the footprint that is required for you to run multiple clusters instead of multi tenants is pretty huge. Like I said in the earlier slide, you need at least maybe 13 pods for you to have a bare minimum production grade cluster. Say, imagine for our workloads, if you have 200 tenants, then that means you exclude what is specific to tenant. The common part itself is repeated 200 times. You don't want that, right? You want, say, one cluster, which is say, 13 pods, and then tenant specific specific pods, you just bring it up and attach it to the same cluster. So that saves a lot of uh, resources and maintenance overhead and so on and so forth. So yeah. So uh, what exactly the problem with HBase with multi-tenancy is? Say you have requirements, two different requirements. So one requirement says that you want uh, very high throughput from disk and network perspective. Uh, but your data footprint is very small, say maybe like 5 TB, right? So you have a second use case where your data footprint is pretty huge. Say you have 100 TB, 200 TB, but your requirements in terms of throughput requirements, QPS, latencies and all are pretty okay because maybe it's a warm store, right? So when you have that, uh, if you see this particular diagram, uh, you can see that uh, what we can do with HBase is, since data layer is not isolated, you need to have uniformity in all sorts of data nodes, right? All tenant data nodes. So either you can have maybe HDD, which is huge uh, in size, in terms of data size that it can store, but it doesn't give you very th good throughput. Or we can, you can have NVMEs, which are probably one TBs and so on, but you need to have a lot of them, right? And if you look at what best you can do is, uh, you can have, um, See, like, uh, earlier I said uh, HBase gives you uh, isolation in uh, regions, right? So you can have uh, region server grouping where you have group of regions, region servers, and this region server hosts regions which is in memory, right? So you are you can give by default the core and memory isolation, but not the data isolation. So that is where I, I put here eight cores, forty GB RAM for say tenant A, which has high throughput requirements, four core 20 GB RAM for tenant B, which has low throughput requirements. But in, ter in terms of disk, they're homogeneous, they have to be homogeneous. So I put, maybe you can solve with 24 TB each of them for both the tenants, which is not really going to solve because tenant A requires high throughput and it, his studies are not going to give you that sort of a throughput. So what really need is on the left side, where you want say one TB SSDs or NVMEs, uh, for tenant A and HDDs are okay with tenant B. So this is what we went to solve for, right? So let's talk about first problem, uh, data isolation, where you can see the second layer that is the data that is stored on disk. So that is what we went to uh, or explored options on how to isolate them because the regions are already isolated. So uh, when we started this, I think in 2018 or so, uh, a few folks from Yahoo had put on a, put out a patch for it uh, on how to solve. Uh, I'll talk about it a bit later. Uh, some aspects of it were merged to mainstream, and some aspects are available from HBase Toronto. That is really not solving the entire problem, but it solves some problem. I'm not going to distinguish between what we have done additional on top of it, but uh, I'll, I'll uh, if I can, I'll explain a bit in uh, very brief detail. Right. So what? Uh, the uh, concept is, uh, I told about regions, regions, every table has a few regions, right? Uh, a region uh, in HBase is uh, not associated with a specific node, like probably in Mongo it is, or probably in MySQL if you have sharded on the client side it is, but not in HBase. In HBase, regions move around based on probably various aspects. Say, for example, if you want, uh, if you have a split in a region, uh, HBase takes care of migrating some regions which are split in where you want or where it is 
write for it based on configurations and so on. So uh, a region, uh, as soon as it comes into existence, it is assigned to some region server, right? Whether you are creating a table or whether you are splitting a table or whether your say your region server is down, then whatever the region servers that are host regions that are hosted on the region servers will move to some other region. So it it comes into existence as soon as. Uh, or probably any time there is a region which is available, it is hosted on some region server. So when a region is getting hosted, Balancer is the one which takes care of doing it, right? So what uh, the thought was, uh, when the region is being assigned, you figure out which nodes this region sh data should be placed, right? Uh, in HDFS, there is a concept called block pinning policy where you can pin a specific block on a specific set of nodes. Say if your replication factor is three, then uh, you specify as part of file creation, say you have a specific file that you want to put it in HDFS cluster, you say this file, you pin to these nodes, right? Those are called favored nodes, right? You say that you place this file here, 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 and you for any data that is, any block that is getting created for that that particular file will be placed on that. Uh, and here, when a region is, either it is coming into existence or it's moving from one region server to another region server, we create favor nodes on HBase side and we store it in as part of meta. Every region has an associated meta. That meta consists of three replicas. Say if you have a three replication factor, three favor nodes. Node one, two, three. And these three nodes belong to the same region server group or same tenant that particular region which belongs to a table is hosted on, right? So that if we ensure, then we are able to solve the problem of this particular table belonging to this particular tenant will be hosted on only these set of nodes which belong to that particular uh, tenant, right? So once uh, a region is assigned, every time there's a movement of region, you re uh, uh, create those favored nodes and this will not happen, uh, the data movement will not happen live. When the compaction happens, the data movement happens, right? Until then, only the new data is going to allocate to the same favored node that are stored in meta. So that is the creating favored node part of it. When it makes use of it, if you look at the right side, so how, uh, what happens in HBase is when a client makes a write, it stores in two places. One, a uh, in-memory mem store, and second, it writes to a wall. Writing to a wall is in sync, so you have durability guarantees. Writing to memory store, in mem store, which can probably go off if the node crashes before it gets flushed to disk, right? And this uh, writing to mem store, uh, the mem, mem store will get flushed once in a while based on, say, if you have memory pressure or uh, you have certain thresholds reached by default, it's 128 MB when memstore gets flushed, right? So when memstore gets flushed, it creates a few files, right? Uh, like I said, uh, each uh, region will have a couple of column families, a few column families, and those translate into few files, not a lot, few files, few H files. And when uh, memstore gets flushed to disk, it translates into a few files. When that particular file is getting uh, written to disk, uh, 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 you can read uh, from meta table, say this particular region belong to which tenant, what are the favored nodes that are available, you write it to only those nodes. So that ensures that there is an isolation in terms of uh, the uh, data that is written to disk. So this is what we were able to achieve if you see left side of the diagram. So there are four nodes, say a tenant A, which has 336 or 328 uh, GB of uh, disks total size. And in that 11 GB is return for that particular tenant. Say if you have consider this as complete data, then you have 1184, around 40 GB of data for, for tenant A. For tenant B, you have uh, 10 TB uh, pods and you have 5 point or TB being used, say 20 TB. So if the isolation was not provided, the first set of nodes would have been full because they're equally spread across. The f first set of nodes would have been full and that will ensure that um, you're not writing or you're not making use of that disk anymore because na name node will start excluding those nodes which are which it's not able to write to, right? And on the right side, if you see the diagram, um, 
what uh, we started, where we started, and where we ended up. You can see that that green uh, blocks that are highlighted, right? So uh, we were able to uh, 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 isolate uh, data. This is now available as part of HBase as an optional balancer, but uh, there were a few problems. One of them being skewness, the other one being uh, data spillover. I'll talk about them, what, what th that really means, right? So next we'll go to uh, the next concept, uh, which is going to solve this problem of data isolation, sorry, data spillover and data uh, skewness uh, with the solution that, with the approach that we took for solving the data uh, aspect of it, right? So HBase uh, load balancer, um, is the center to it in terms of auto rebalancing the regions or making sure that all the nodes are being utilized correctly. So HBase Balancer takes care of that, right? So how HBase Balancer works is, in HBase Balancer there are uh, two uh, probably uh, concepts. One of them is a cost function. The other one is a candidate generator. What is a cost function? Say you have uh, uh, you want, uh, you have say 10 nodes or 10 region servers. All 10 of them, uh, the goal is to make use of them uh, equally, right? Um, you don't want any skewness. Then what you what you would do, uh, you would probably host same number of regions, right? Or probably you would ensure that equal amount of QPS is being spread across or equal amount of uh, data is spread across. So there are various constructs that you would put to make sure that it is used in an equal fashion. So that is what a, a balancer does. And what cost function does is, say you have uh, certain pivots on which that you want it to be balanced, say equal number of regions. So in that case, uh, you associate a cost to it. Say if one region server is having five regions, the other region server is having 10 regions, then it's imbalanced. So you associate a cost with it saying this is imbalanced and you have a weightage for each of the pivots that you want it to be balanced. So there are uh, several several cost functions that that comes by default as part of uh, uh, any load balancer in HBase and you can add, you can register more uh, if you want to. So that is a cost function and candidate generator is when balancer is happening to ensure that regions are balanced uh, it picks up some candidates, some regions to move from one region server to another region server. So that is what is a candidate generator. It generates the candidates. So what balancer, uh, I'll just briefly explain about balancer, uh, how it works. So when it, balancer runs uh, in a specific, in a fixed amount of intervals, say once in 15 minutes, once in 30 minutes, based on what your configuration is. When balancer is started, uh, you are uh, going to calculate what is the current cost for c existing set of cost functions. Say if it's highly imbalanced, then cost will be on the higher side. If it's very much balanced, as per your definition of a balance, then it will be on the lower side. So it does calculate the cost and you you would have put in the configuration or by default some configuration comes saying what is the threshold. Say between 0 to 1, if it is 0 0.1 is your threshold, then cost should be less than 0 0.1. If it is more than that, then balancer will kick in, right? And once the balancer kicks in, then uh, it has a configuration for fixed set of, fixed number of iterations, say maybe like 100,000 or 200,000 or a million, right? So that is pre-configured. You can configure it if you want a higher number or lower number. So on each step, what it does is it identifies a candidate to move region from one region server to another region server, and then uh, it calculates the cost again. If the cost is reduced, then it will apply to the overall plan. If it cost is not reduced, then it will discard it. So it keeps on doing it 100,000 times. And overall, the cost is reduced, then your regions, regions are balanced or region servers are optimally utilized, and then you exit. And then you apply those changes that you tried or probably you uh, worked during this balancer run. So that is what is the balancer about or how it works. So um, in terms of spillover and skewness that I was talking about, the previous problem uh, that happened with the earlier solution was, say, uh, say consider this is your setup uh, where you have four nodes and there are three regions and there are each of three copies, that is nine 
nine data copies. So now node one dies. Node one dies. Then uh, I said earlier a region, a favored node is going to change only if a region is migrated from one region server to another region server. So here if you see uh, R1 which is hosted on node A1, uh, because node A1 died, R1 moves from uh, A1 to uh, A4. So since R1 is moved, now you can see the copies are redistributed. R11, R12 and R13 are redistributed so that they are again spread across three different racks, three different region servers. But uh, R22, R31 are not moved out of A1. Then what happens? Uh, the R2 copy, one of the data block is still on A1. It gets re-replicated, but that results into spillover. That is, this is done completely on the HDFS side. HDFS side doesn't have any understanding of what uh, 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 what an isolation is, which tenant belongs to, which node belongs to which tenant and so on and so forth. It doesn't have. So that is why it results into a spillover and the same reason why there is a skewness. Right? And how did we solve? So we solved by uh, writing a couple of cost functions, couple of candidate generators. So what basically cost function does is, uh, you look at on the right side, sorry, left side. So on the upper part, you have four nodes. All nodes are healthy. Uh, three regions and nine copies of data, uh, everything is fine. So here the cost function will give the cost as zero, that is perfectly balanced. And on the below side, below if you see, node A2 is dead, then that means some blocks are assigned to dead node, then the cost will increase. So that will balance the job is to reduce the cost. Right? Based on what weightage you give, accordingly the function would have so much weightage to reduce the cost. Right. So by just adding these cost functions and associating or registering with the balancer, automatically balancer brings down the cost. And appropriately for these cost functions, you have a candidate generator on which moving regions will reduce this cost. So that's what candidate generator does. On the right side, if you see similarly, on the upper diagram, you can see the cost is 0 0.05, lower is 0 0.025. The cost is lesser on the above one because the skewness is less. The amount of data that is there on each node is more or less equal, but if you go below and see the data on say node A2 is versus A1 is vastly different. So then the cost will increase. So this is what will uh, be given as input to balancer to reduce uh, the, uh, uh, to, uh, to make it a better balance system. So with this we are able to solve the problem of uh, um, um, the data isolation with skewness. Um, uh, with uh, skewness, yeah. So the next problem that we went to solve for is wall isolation. The wall isolation again uh, is going to come in the right path. So you need to have isolation to give you that uh, uh, throughput guarantees for different tenants. Uh, this diagram I showed it earlier. What is the right path like in a HBase? Um, right directly writing to disk wall files. Um, disk will come into picture. So that's why you need uh, the isolation of walls. So if you look at this, then when a wall is being written, again you make use of the uh, favored nodes that are available on meta. You read them and then while writing it, you ensure that the data is written to only those nodes which belong to that particular tenant, not to other nodes. Exactly the concept, same concept. Again, then with this, we were able to solve the isolation aspects. And next part is we uh, wanted to solve for change data capture. So, uh, so what is change data capture? Uh, if you look, uh, look for, say, uh, any database, so you have certain uh, characteristics of a database, uh, you write some data to it, that single database might not solve all of your, uh, say, needs. You might want an additional or different sort of database for you to say run reports or something else and something else. So you uh, probably use uh, a concept called team data capture, which some of the databases make it available outright. And then you take out the data, the changes that happen to a database and probably write it to a secondary DB. 
say that is uh, one example of why you need a change data capture. Another example is say you have a multi uh, multi application transaction, right? For example, if you are talking about e-commerce uh, in the e-commerce world, uh, say you have checkout, you have payment system, you have order management system. All of these things, three things, should come together to make a transaction successful, an order placed, right? So how do you make of make these things connect together? So change data capture. A change is captured from one system and propagated to another system. Other system will apply and they talk to each other to ensure that the change is applied everywhere. So that is the example of change data capture. So uh, in HBase, uh, there is a, a interface uh, called replication endpoint. Uh, you can implement this interface and then register it with HBase uh, to get any changes uh, that are um, probably changed in the system, right? So you write to some particular table, some particular column family, and then you ch take the only the change out, and this endpoint registration will ensure that you take the data out, right? So for change data captures, we have uh, in uh, in in our workplace we created. Uh, two we, two implementation of replication endpoint. One is for Kafka, the other one is for Pulsar, right? And then uh, with respect to packaging, uh, we packaged uh, the configuration specific to a tenant uh, as part of the configuration, and that will ensure that this everything happens within a region server. A region server receives the data, and region servers where it wants to send everything is part of it. And region server belongs to a specific tenant, and each tenant has its own configuration of where the data uh, should go, or probably which topic it needs to write in Kafka and so on and so forth, which table the data is, which column family, all the context that it has. And with this, we were able to provide the isolation in terms of um, change data capture as well. So then uh, we solved some more uh, uh, problems with the, uh, with respect to multi-tenancy. I'm not going to go into a lot of details on each of these. A uh, couple of blogs are there uh, that we have written, and it's part of the slides. You can go over. I'll just briefly explain. So in cluster replication also, uh, a particular tenant in, say, one DC uh, figures out which particular tenant is there in the other DC and only writes to that directly instead of going over some other. A region to server to region server of the same tenant are being uh, talked and then they write the data. So that is not there by default in HBase. So we solved for that as well. And then um, snapshots, uh, some of the uh, typical typically used for data, uh, backups uh, or probably data migrations and so on. Some of those things we solved. And then backup restore also, we added some constructs around multi-tenancy. And uh, all of those things, uh, wherever there's a public reference to it, either using a blog or probably, um, um, uh, what do you call, um, a patch available. I've put links on um, here in the summary. Uh, you can, uh, if you're interested, you can have a uh, look at and uh, here are the links for um, part one and part two of blogs that goes in a lot more detail than what I explained here. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, I can take them.